Do you often find yourself in a situation where you have made a new friend and enjoy their company, but you can't help but wonder? And as a result, you find yourself distancing from them. That kind of response, hypervigilance, withdrawal, a lack of trust, and difficulty connecting may stem from a trauma you inherited. You see, the brain is good at adapting and helping you survive a traumatic event or chronic stress. You may become more distant and distrust people, which is helpful in the short term. But what if the threat is gone and we stay in survival mode? A brain constantly anticipating danger can not only lead to symptoms of anxiety disorders and PTSD, but that specific response may be passed to the next generation. It is not that someone affected by intergenerational trauma will have memories of what their parents or grandparents went through, but they will experience the symptoms and have responses as if the trauma happened to them. Why do we end up copying those traumatic responses? There are two reasons. As children, it is easy to copy our parents' maladaptive stress responses. This is what we know as modeling, and it is one of the most common ways of learning, especially when we are young and are learning how to behave. We mimic what our parents do. We do as we see. And it is not necessarily that the father or mother had the traumatic event. Maybe they also copied the behavior from their parents and so on. For example, suppose a child makes a mistake and the father starts yelling at him. In that case, the child is likely to behave in a similar way when they grow up and see their own children making a mistake. But it is not only that we are mimicking our parents' behavior. Inherited genes, or more accurately, the chemical modifications of inherited genes, may sometimes pass information to the offspring about a trauma. These chemical markers will turn some genes on and others off. And depending on the genes modified, we may become more anxious or better at burning or storing fat. It can just change so many things. In one study using farm animals, mothers with high levels of stress fostered a prenatal environment that led to offspring with a genetic predisposition for low stress tolerance. These children were less likely to try new things and were less able to cope with difficult conditions. And these effects can even affect up to two generations. And in another study, scientists made mice offspring wary of smells associated with physical harm to their parents. Researchers would make mice smell acetophenone, which pretty much smells like cherry blossoms. And at the same time, they would sap the foot of the mice, causing pain. This was repeated to the point that the sapping was associated with the smell of cherry blossoms. The mice had offspring, and when the pups smelled cherry blossoms, guess what happened? They became more nervous and jumpy. Not only that, but the puppies of the puppies also were more sensitive to the scent of cherry blossoms. Scientists were able to link this higher sensitivity to changes in the DNA of the sperm. They found chemical markers on a gene that encodes a smell receptor involved in detecting the smell of cherry blossoms. And when looking at their brains, they also had more neurons that could detect this smell. To be clear, it was not the fear that was passed to the pups, but they were more sensitive towards the cherry blossom smell and showed a response. In a way, this is fascinating, because they were probably getting better at detecting danger, and in natural circumstances, this would help them avoid that smell and the danger that it comes with it. The inheritance of modified genes, while interesting, is thought to be rare because usually, when genes are passed down, the chemical markers that control how much a gene will be expressed are removed and new ones will be added to the next generation. Intergenerational trauma isn't something that can be reversed overnight. In some cases, this can take a lifetime to unlearn. It's important to stay patient throughout the whole process, to find reliable social support systems, and to look for healthy ways to process your emotions. Since the trauma responses from our role models are what we see and experience, 
it is very difficult as a child to understand what a safe and healthy environment looks and feels like. And the cycle will continue through generations until someone is finally aware and makes the conscious decision to change the response that was instilled as a child for something more healthy. There are trauma-focused therapies out there for families who wish to seek professional help, such as narrative exposure therapy and trauma-focused cognitive behavioral therapy. Did you know that there are two types of narcissistic personality disorder? Check this video if you're curious about what those types are.